20 points a game each. They've combined for eight right now at the break. Well, he better hope that Tim Frazier, who came up a little gimpy there right before the half, and he kept him out the remaining of the first half, is able to go. And the old coach, Gene Cady, always told me, probably the smartest thing he ever said to me, the first five minutes of the second half is the most important part of the game. So if they come out a little 5-0, 6-0 run, get themselves back in the game, they just need some kind of momentum to push them forward the rest of the 20 minutes. Four points for Newble, four points for Frazier, and Penn State is down by nine at the break. When we come back, we'll update you on all the other games going on in the Big Ten this afternoon. And there are a handful of them. See what Purdue is doing as they try to get a big win against West Virginia. Also check in on the Hoosiers and the Hawkeyes. This is the State Farm Halftime Report. Yeah, I'm married. Does it matter? You do that for me? Really? Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis. She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so... Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state. So you can get out of your element. So you can explore a new frontier. And a different discipline. Get two times the points on travel and dining at restaurants from Chase Sapphire Preferred. So you can be inspired by great food once again. Chase Sapphire Preferred. I referred four of my neighbors to DirecTV and now I get $40 off my bill every month. But the real reason I did it was that stupid cable van. It seemed like every week there it was, ripping out this, tearing up this. I mean, it was always something. DirecTV is reliable, and you get the best channels. Refer a friend to DirecTV, and you'll both get $10 off your bill every month. Just give them your account number before they call 1-855-REFER-NOW. Tim back here checking in on the highlights from the day. Indiana taking on Kennesaw State and Luke Fisher with the block. Troy Williams finds Yogi Ferrell with a big performance. Hoosiers lead by 18. They're running in the second half. Ferrell finds Williams. Get up! Indiana's up by 21 and more from Farrell who ended the day with 25 points. The last three halves of Yogi Farrell has played has been the best three halves of his career playing at a high level as the Hoosiers roll. 90 to 66, the Hoosiers win. Big one for Purdue on the road against West Virginia. Ronnie Johnson flies down the court. No, but there's the putback by Travis Carroll. The Boilermakers are up by two at the break. Tyrone Johnson from deep. Purdue's up by three. A few passes here. Carter Smotherman, Kendall Stevens. Boilermakers looking good. This would be a, a really nice road win against a West Virginia team that's just okay. Got a few more minutes to play in that one. They're holding on to a four-point lead. Iowa just dominant on Arkansas Pine Bluff. Bluff. I guess really the big story, Josh Oglesby is now back and healthy, which means they got 11 players who can play. You know, if there's one weakness in Iowa, it's that they're not a great three-point shooting team. Oglesby has always struggled finding his stroke. If he becomes consistent, that's a huge helper for Iowa. It's not a typo. 52-15. Whoa! At the break. Northwestern and Brown, the Bill Friedman Classic. Sean McGonigal! For three and Brown's up 17 to 13. Center five minutes left. Drew Crawford give and go. Sobo Crawford gets the bucket, makes the free throw. Northwestern, although at home against the Brown Bears, down by two points. Give me the biggest takeaway from those four games. I thought Iowa was good. Fact is, they're really, really good. I think Iowa could win the Big Ten this year. They're going to be really tough at home, and even their losses are two games, in my mind, they gave away to Villanova and Iowa State, two teams that are still 
undefeated to date. Mike, if they were to win those two games, they'd be in the top 10 in the country. So much depth. Fran's got it rolling in Iowa City. It's going to be a lot of fun games played out there. It's, it's amazing. If you haven't had a chance to watch them, the fun thing is it's like a hockey shift. It's a line shift. Like the five guys go out. Five new guys come in, and now that Ogles be back, they've got another guy on the bench who can play. Too. And there's not like a drop off in talent. Right. Really, really good team. Brand Taylor getting the bucket here. Penn State it's in trouble. They're down nine points. It was the guy who started shopping too late for most sites, so he ordered from BestBuy.com and picked up his gift that night. It's never too late to order online. Pick up in-store the same day to get great gifts like the Beats pill. Best Buy. GoPSUSports.com has news, info, and so much more. Plus, find everything you're looking for online at shop.gopsusports.com. Part of the Big Ten Digital Network. Carry around your favorite team wherever you go with the Big Ten Network mobile app. Create your own mobile man cave. Better play on through, guys. He's got live sports. It's team pride on the go. So make the Big Ten Network your plus one. The BTN to go app. Fan up, fans, and download it today. BTN kicks off 2014 in a big way. The best basketball conference in the country takes center stage with exclusive Big Ten Super Wednesday doubleheaders. And only the journey goes everywhere to capture the drama on and off the court. Plus, for the first time, experience the excitement of Big Ten hockey with Frozen Friday doubleheaders. It's all this January, only on BTN. In 2012, I was playing soccer in Costa Rica, having a dream to take my talents to the U.S. For weeks, I waited by the phone, hoping to get the call from Penn State. When it finally came, I was excited and anxious. My freshman year was unlike anything I've ever experienced. Is it possible that reality can be better than a dream? Watching Penn State's last game in the non-conference schedule, New Year's Eve, they take on the Spartans to begin things. Let's take a moment now and look at the entire Big Ten. What have we learned from this non-conference schedule? Start off with the newcomer to the conference who's impressed you the most. Yeah, you want to say a freshman right now, but I'm going to go with the junior college transfer, DeAndre Matthew. One of the first guys head coach Richard Patino signed, and he's exactly what Patino ordered. He's a little guy, he likes to play really fast, he defends, coming off a career high 27 points against Omaha, really talented. What player in the conference impressed you the most? Uh, speaking of talent, Adrian Payne. Here's a guy who gets better each and every year, improved his jump shot last year, now his post moves, now using the left hand a little bit more, absolutely ate up the Longhorns for 33 points, nine rebounds. Today, best player in the conference. What about team? I absolutely love. And I mean, I love Wisconsin. They share the basketball. They really exemplify the word team. Trayvon Jackson's a great leader. Sam Decker's a pro. They have guys in the perimeter that can make shots. Wisconsin, in my mind, is the most fun to watch in this conference. And they get a bad rap, Mike, right? Wisconsin, boring basketball? Not, Not this, this year. year. Not at all. They are deep. They are high scoring. They still have a good defense. They're fun to watch. DB, DJ Newbill needs some offense. He's only got four points at the break. Eric and Sean are coming back, seeing if he can get that. Second half calls next.
Hit the hardwood for college hoops on BTN. Witness the high-flying dunks and the end-to-end -end excitement as a doubleheader of non-conference action tips off. Big Ten Basketball, Friday on BTN and... Are you overwhelmed by paper clutter and wasting time looking for lost files? Maybe it's time to get neat. The incredible Neat Desk Scanner and Organizer is the only scanner that thinks while it scans. So it automatically organizes your important documents quickly and easily right on your computer. Now that shoebox full of receipts instantly becomes an expense report. That stack of business cards goes directly into your contact list. Now you can easily organize your bank statements, medical records, taxes, you name it. And any piece of paper becomes searchable with a simple keyword. Call or go online right now to try the NEAT system for a full 30 days absolutely free. Try the NEAT desk or the portable NEAT receipt scanner. And we'll pay for the return postage if you decide to send it back. Call 1-800-626-1304 or visit tryneat.com. That's 1-800-626-1304 or visit tryneat.com. Say goodbye to all that paper. Welcome back, everyone. We are at halftime at the Bryce George Center, and surprisingly, Mount St. Mary's leading Penn State after 20 minutes, 46-37. Alongside Sean Morris, I'm Eric Collins. This is a Mount St. Mary's team that had not won on the road so far this year. But the way they're shooting right now, they've got a chance against the Nittany Lions. Especially from three-point range. They averaged 26 three-point attempts on the year. Does Mount St. Mary's, and they're on that pace today. Nine of 16 from deep for the visitors. That has allowed them to build the cushion. And then Penn State has just done, done a good job of locating them, particularly in transition. The pace is right where Mount St. Mary's wants it. And Eric, if you are the Nittany Lions, this is what you have to do. You have to dribble drive, get in the paint, or interior feet. Of the 37 points that the Nittany Lions have put on the board, 28 have come via points in the paint. The remaining nine have come from the foul line. That has to be a point of emphasis for Penn State. Get inside, you have the size advantage. Take a look at the Jared the Galleria of Jewelry first half stats. Penn State's happy with the 48% shooting. But you cannot be happy with allowing Mount St. Mary's to shoot close to 60%, including 9 of 16 from behind the arc. That's a recipe for disaster. Will this turn into a disaster, or will there be enough time to turn it around? We shall see. Second half action coming your way in a moment. So you can have a getaway from what you know. So you can be surprised by what you don't. Get two times the points on travel and dining at restaurants from Chase Sapphire Preferred. So you can taste something that wakes up your soul. Chase Sapphire Preferred. So you can. Hit the hardwood for college hoops on BTN. Witness the high-flying dunks and the end-to-end -end excitement as a doubleheader of non-conference action tips off. Big Ten Basketball, Friday on BTN and BTN to go. Hello? Boo, I am the ghost of meals past. Uh, when you don't use Pam, this is what you get. Residue. I prefer food-based phantasm, food-tasm. Poultry Geist works, too, if you use chicken. <laughs> residue do. Bargain Brand Cooking Spray can leave annoying residue, but Pam leaves up to 99% less residue. Pam helps you keep it off. Add to the action with BTN Connect. Rolling it down! See all the Twitter activity from around the conference. Get in-game stats and interact with our experts. Join your favorite team at btn.com slash connect. When the game is over, our team breaks it all down. The Big Ten Finale presented by Reese's. In-depth highlights, expert analysis, and insights you won't find anywhere else. The Big Ten Finale presented by Reese's. After the game, only on BTN. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Big Ten Conference and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference. Basketball on BTN is brought to you by Duluth Trading Firehose Pets. Tougher than a giant angry beaver. 
That's a gorgeous shot. That's actually Mount Nittany. That's why Penn State called the Nittany Lions. Just outside the Bryce Jordan Center, State College, Pennsylvania. This is the final non-conference game for Penn State before starting the Big Ten slate, what will be the 22nd season in the Big Ten for Penn State. Now, history on the line for the Northeast Conference. Mount St. Mary's out of the NEC. They have a chance with a nine-point lead at the break to beat a Big Ten team. You just saw that graphic hadn't been done in a long time. Oh, for the last 68, the Northeast Conference against the Big Ten. Alongside Sean Morris, I'm Aaron Collins. Penn State will start with the basketball. Same original five that began the game on the floor for the Nittany Lions. New Bill Frazier, Travis, Jack, and Taylor. And a rebound inside. Taylor Danaher didn't play a lot in the first half with foul trouble. He grabs the rebound. He has two fouls next to his name. Jump shot missed by Wack. One and done. Nittany line basketball. And if you're Penn State, you want to continue to go inside. And a foul, reach-in foul on Wack. He got Newville, who'll go to the free throw line. So in live action, it looked like a pretty good strip by Wack here. That's, that's a beneficial call if you're Penn State. I thought that was a pretty good play by Wack. What the officials saw, anytime that you make that downward motion, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a foul if you were, rather than if you were to come up on the basketball. But that was a pretty good defensive effort by Wack on the help side. Penn State's been really good at the free throw line. They've only missed once in their first 11 free throw attempts so far today. So Newville gets two back. He's got a half dozen. Lead is seven for Mount St. Mary. Ooh, that's, an open back. Yep. that's a mental mistake made by Khalid Nawandu. Just threw the ball after crossing over half court. And I like what Penn State did to try to get themselves re-energized, extending that defense to the three-quarter court area. Got an unforced error they need to take advantage of. It's still a lot of time in this ball game, Eric. Continue to go inside. If you're Donovan Jack, number five, you need to post up with a sense of urgency. He's been down on the block, but he hasn't been demanding the basketball. Here's Jack inside on Hughes. He's got six points. And Mount St. Mary throws it away again. Donovan Jack came up. Looked like he was going to offer the ball screen. Rolled to the rim instead. And a good start offensively, Eric, for the Nittany Lions. Cutting into that lead. Down five with the ball. This is smooth and precise on-road handling. This is total confidence and comfort. This is easy to use off-road capability when you need it. This is 70 and counting safety and security features. This is the freedom to keep chasing all the horizons you want. Introducing the all-new 2014 Jeep Cherokee. Well-qualified lessees can lease the all-new 2014 Jeep Cherokee Sport for $259 a month. Hit the hardwood for college hoops on BTN. Witness the high-flying dunks and the end-to-end -end excitement as a doubleheader of non-conference action tips off. Big Ten Basketball, Friday on BTN and BTN to go. Farmers presents 15 seconds of smart. So you want to drive more safely. Stop eating. Take deep breaths. Avoid bad weather. Get eight hours. Turn it down. And, of course, talk to farmers. Hi. Hi. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. BTN kicks off 2014 in a big way. The best basketball conference in the country takes center stage with exclusive Big Ten Super Wednesday doubleheaders. And only the journey goes everywhere to capture the drama on and off the court. Plus, for the first time, experience the excitement of Big Ten hockey with Frozen Friday doubleheaders. It's all this January, only on BTN. New Year's Day. BTN has all the excitement from Pasadena covered before and after the game. At 4.30, the State Farm Rose Bowl pregame breaks down the matchups and offers a first look at the scene in the stadium. And when the action is over, 
switch to the State Farm Final Drive Bowl Edition for a recap of a busy day of football and the best highlights in post-game interviews. It's all New Year's Day, only on BTN. Well, Friday is the return of men's basketball with a doubleheader coming your way. First, you got the Buckeyes hosting Louisiana Monroe. Then Northwestern's going to take on DePaul, Battle of Chicago. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern. That's Friday on BTN. And BTN to go. But Ohio State still perfect after blitzing Notre Dame in the final minute of yesterday's game. And Northwestern, on the other hand, just 6-5 and five in the first 11 games during the Chris Collins era. And right now on the ropes, Brown, the Bears out of the Ivy League, actually leading Northwestern in that one by a point in the second half. Well, a few years ago, Brown came in in a similar situation and behind three-point shooting was able to get the win. But Ohio State, which will also be on the Big Ten Network on later this week, I tell you what, Eric, the job they did defensively in that last minute was outstanding, led by Aaron Kraft and Lenzel Smith. Chance for the three-point play for John Ross Travis. Just using that body to back in Sam Prescott, shoot over him and draw the foul. And he's not a fair fight. Travis 6'6", 225, Prescott 6'3", 190. Rare free throw miss for the Nittany Lions. They have come out, have the Nittany Lions, and scored the first six points of this half. Mount St. Mary's inside, score the goal. They're going to get it right back. Prescott a chance for the three-point play. And Prescott was able to get to the rim because he had stretched out Penn State defensively with some earlier three-point shots, Eric, and the Nittany Lions do not close out under control on Prescott. He takes advantage, a chance for the end one here. And that foul on Donovan Jack is second. Gregory Graves is going to replace Prescott here for a moment. If you didn't see our first half, Penn Straight welcoming John Johnson and Jordan Dickerson into the fold. Here's a turnover in transition. Ball is knocked away from Nwandu, but he's fouled by Brandon Taylor. And that just started with a very poor passing decision by D.J. Newball. He tried to throw a cross-court pass against three-quarter court pressure, a very easy interception by Mount St. Mary's. And that's exactly what they want to do, turn you over and get into a scramble situation. Now, this is an important game for Khalid Nwandu. He is a Pennsylvania native. Freshman from York, Pennsylvania. This is the first free throw. I mistakenly said that last foul's on Brandon Taylor. is actually on Tim Frazier. It's Frazier's first. Byron Ash had a real nice first half. He checks into the game for the first time here in the second half. To your point, Eric, he was three of four from behind the arc in the first 20 minutes. Allen Roberts onto the floor for Penn State. That's close. Doing a nice job. Nice job by Mount St. Mary's. Look where the shot clock is right now for the Nittany Lions. But a good, better job by Ross Travis of not settling. You can see Mount St. Mary's backing off, almost goading him to take that distant shot. Body flying. Wackhand hits the shot. Travis with the rebound. Penn State has not made a jump shot in today's game. Everything they've scored has been in the paint or at the free throw line. Ross Travis, nice job. You could see Danaher wanted to goad him into taking that shot. Travis wasn't biting and showing some versatility. We saw him last time out versus Princeton, his ability to get the ball on the floor and convert. He continues to expand his offensive game. I think some Mount St. Mary's fans think that he may travel, carry the ball along the baseline. Going for a rebound, we're going to have a foul called on Mount St. Mary. It's Danaher's third. And again, I don't like that shot by Penn State. The Nittany Lions very fortunate there because that's exactly what Mount St. Mary's wants you to do, particularly with the fact you haven't been able to convert anything outside of the paint area. You can get that shot anytime. No need to go away from going inside still 
Over 17 and a half minutes to go in this ball game. Nitty Lions 0 for 6. Shooting three-pointers. Frazier gets inside. Newville sets up Travis. Offensive rebound, Roberts. was a Philadelphia playground basket. He just flat out took it away from Mount St. Mary's. Watch number two come in right here. Says, I'll give me that. And one. So Penn State exceedingly cold. Shooting from distance. Just deciding to take it inside where they're having some success. Three points on that possession. And the lead is just two from Mount St. Mary's. And Penn State showing a little bit of a zone look to Mount St. Mary's. Norfleet misses the circus shot, but an offensive rebound and a timeout called. Gorgeous basketball play by Gregory Gray. Watch how many guys are on the floor when the rebound is actually corralled. You had four guys on the floor, two from each squad. Graves with the wherewithal to call the timeout and maintain possession for the Mountaineers. It's very rare that you're able to corral a rebound from your roaster, but you just saw it right there. <laughs> Let's take a look at the uh, backcourt for Penn State and see how DJ Newville and Tim Frazier are doing so far today. It's uh, a duo that averages 37 points per game. Right now, they're kind of idling at 13 points Newville. combined. Newbill has kind of picked it up here a little bit in the second half. And, you know, Tim Frazier just hasn't been able to get into any kind of flow thus far today. We talked about the fact he landed kind of awkwardly on his feet, on his, uh, one of his feet, his right foot. And then Penn State combining their woes here by fouling a three-point shoot. Norfleet is fouled. He'll have three free throws. Oh, from behind. Newbill called for the foul. He thinks he got all ball. And whether he got him or not, I think you can make a case either way. But why put the official in that position, especially when you're coming from behind? Because from where he was coming, coming into your screen there, the official, when he came in there and swung down on the arm, he essentially straight lined the official who was making the call. So even though it may not have been contact, and you could argue either way, he put the official in a tough spot. Now watch what he did. Watch the official that made the call as Newbill flew by. He basically blocked him and he saw the downward motion on the hand in the missed shot. Norfleet only makes one of the three. The other way. Newbill! Another chance for the three point play. D.J. Newbill playing with some anger in the second half. Well, he, we saw him on the offensive end of the floor just take an offensive rebound away. And if you're going to have a foul on D.J. Newbill, don't go wholesale. You better give him the retail price on the foul because if he has the opportunity to get into the shooting motion with his strength, he's going to complete. Penn State missing an opportunity to tie it at 51. Tons of basketball left to be played. Mount St. Mary's 0 for 7 historically against the Nittany Lions. North Plate the lead. Wide open is Gray. Direction play by Mount St. Mary's. You saw Northley get in the lane, all the white jerseys rotate, and then the kick back out to Graves. The three point accuracy, very impressive, continuing for Mount St. Mary's. Bill gets inside and again finishes with authority. It's been all DJ Newbill here in the second half. He's up to 13 points. Good job by Newville being very active defensively. Nice job by Newville. 
Wax gets a screen from Graves. Oh, man, he got bailed out. He was zigzagging through that lane. His failsafe was trying to throw it up with his left hand, and he was grabbed on the wrist. He'll have free throws when we come back. But Penn State with new life because of the junior, D.J. Newville. Okay, so what do you have? Ryan, what do you think? Oh, uh... <laughs> Um, Lallygaggin ain't for leaders. They're too busy making plays happen. Answering the call. Earning their big boy pants. Isn't it time to be the leader you were born to be? The playbook's right there, Captain. What's the call? We'll have nachos, fried pickles, pretzels, buffalitos, honey barbecue wings, and waters all around. Grab a seat. The game is on. Buffalo Wild Wings, the official hangout for NCAA football. She's not famous. She's never been on a red carpet. But she's the star of my life. K Jewelers presents a collection from Hollywood's premier jewelry designer, Neil Lane Designs. My designs are inspired by Hollywood's glamorous past. Handcrafted diamond rings, earrings, and necklaces with a vintage look at K, the number one jewelry store in America. For the star in your life. Every kiss begins with K. Carry around your favorite team wherever you go with the Big Ten Network mobile app. Get up there, Create your own mobile man cave. Better play on through, guys. He's got live sports. It's team pride on the go. So make the Big Ten Network your plus one. The BTN to go app. Fan up, fans, and download it today. Anything? If I said yes, would that have any impact on you at all? Not really. Sorry I'm late. Got held up by a serial killer. They did a TV movie about you, right? Yeah. It was good. I have this brilliant idea of a sequel. Guilty. We're entering a plea of guilty. I'm six months behind in my alimony payment, and the IRS is so far up my... It's just a matter of time before I go to jail. With a face like this, my dance card's gonna be awfully full. Break premieres next month on Fox. You now the holidays getting off to a rousing start for the Penn State women's volleyball team. They won the NCAA championship this just last night. It was an all Big Ten final. And Penn State wins it in four sets. Just an incredible performance. Yet another national title for Penn State. Russ Rose has built a dynasty in state college. You take a look at the record of success and the Big Ten Conference as a whole establishing their dominance as a volleyball league of the final 16 teams in the NCAA tournament. Seven were from the Big Ten and you saw right there an all Big Ten final last night in Seattle. That's cool. After the timeout, a couple of free throws here for Rashad Wack. He makes the first. Wack, a senior from Hyattsville, Maryland. He's an accounting major. He's accounted for 10 points after that free throw's been made. Started his college career at George Mason. John Johnson back into the game. We saw Johnson play a, a large portion of that first half. His first game eligible here at Penn State after transferring from Pitt. And the formula remains the same for Penn State in the second half. Get it to D.J. Newville and get out of the way. I like that formula. It has paid dividends, and you mentioned it, a real concerted effort off the out-of-bounds. They throw it into Johnson, who leads it ahead to Newville. Who, there was no question what he was going to do with it. He was going to take it right to the rim. Taylor Danaher back in. He's playing with three fouls. He replaces Gregory Graves, who leaves the floor after picking up his third foul. Changes for Penn State. Geno Thorpe into the game. And Jordan Dickerson in as well. Dickerson, the sophomore from Brooklyn, playing in his first Penn State game. Just recently made eligible by the NCAA after transferring from SMU. Dickerson wears number 32 in white. He is a true seven-footer at seven feet, 240 pounds. And this three-quarter court pressure paid dividends with a turnover the last time it was employed, and it has done its job this far. Now the shot clock approaching 20 for Mount St. Mary's. Norfleet uses the screen from Danaher. 
Will Miller into the game. Don't lose sight of him if you're Penn State. Prescott has it blocked away by Dickerson. It will stay with Mount St. Mary's, but only three seconds on the shot clock. Nice job by Dickerson of rotating over. I thought he had a chance to catch that. He goes with two hands, Eric. He might have a chance to corral that himself. Difficult spot throw in by Mount St. Mary's. The inbounder cannot run with the ball. Norfleet got it! From straight away in 26 feet, Norfleet's got 15. Whenever it seems as if Penn State's getting close, those three-point shots were to start falling again for Mount St. Mary. It was Prescott in the first half along with Graves and Norfleet showing you why he averages 19 a game. Oh, Frazier inside, and the foul. So now playing the role of D.J. Newville and getting it inside is Tim Frazier. Look for a lot of isolation plays down the stretch, be it for Newville or Frazier. And the last time down, <laughs> Goodness. Norfleet able to drain a triple and a good job by Frazier of using the crossover and getting to the rim. They're going to isolate either Newville or Frazier the vast majority of the time in the half court are the Nittany Lions. Lead is just due for Mount St. Mary. Prescott guarded by Frazier. Good job by Newville of closing out on Miller here. We can get going for three as well. Again, the shot clock winding down, down to seven. Norfleet gets inside. Oh, that'll be the toughest shot he'll hit all season. I'm not sure he saw the rim, Eric, with Dickerson flying in there, and Norfleet has finished at the rim with both hands this afternoon. Easy. Johnson. That's the first outside shot. Penn State's in today. Their first of seven three-pointers they've taken. So John Johnson coming here from Pitt because of his outside prowess hits his first. Northley can't get it back but an offensive rebound. Prescott. Wow. These guys aren't going away. Chance for a three-point play for Sam Prescott. Well, John Johnson, you mentioned it, knocking down the first shot from outside the paint for Penn State on the afternoon. And even though the three-point shot didn't go, it did create an offensive rebound opportunity. And once again, off the scramble situation, Mount St. Mary's able to convert. Sam Prescott, the senior from Philadelphia, having a huge game. 15 points, give him 16. Johnson, Newville, Frazier, Travis, and Jack, the five on the floor. Nice set. Excellent job. That was beautiful execution, a design play once they got over the top. Watch right here. Good job by Frazier of coming up and being a release. Once he caught the ball, that's an automatic dive for Johnson, and that's a difficult bounce pass to deliver and complete by Johnson. What a wonderful, wonderful job of executing by the Nittany Lions. The success getting to the rim and converting has been outstanding for Patrick Chambers' team. And for you, Eric, I will do this. The shooting outside was frightful, but inside the scoring's been delightful. <laughs> oh, wonderful. The offense for both sides has been close to unmatched. Now, the defense leaves a bit to be desired, but the difficulty of shots made in today's game as an example of some good defense played by Penn State, forcing a turnover as Ash throws it away. That three-quarter court pressure has paid dividends for the Nittany Lions. We saw an unforced turnover to start the half. This is essentially another unforced turnover, and Mount St. Mary's was very fortunate that they didn't draw an offensive foul earlier in that sequence with the inside push-off. 
Nittany Lions haven't led since when the score was 18 to 17. Got a chance to go ahead here. Travis loses it out of hand, out of bounds. And Travis is trying to corral that with one hand and hold off the defender inside. And Coach Patrick Chambers thought he might have had a little bit of help of only going up with one arm. Ash on his trap. That's, oh man, Ash dribbled himself into a whole world of hurt. He committed about three basketball sins there. He dribbled into the corner. He pulled up his dribble. He turned the back to the double team. Then he had the sideline and the end line as additional defenders. Then he jumped to make a pass. Is that four? I lost count. <laughs> Look at Norfleet weave his way in and is fouled by Jack. That's the third foul on Donovan Jack. Oh, Julian Norfleet has been very impressive. He's knocked down some three-point shots, and he has shown the ability and the willingness to get to the rim. Senior from Virginia Beach. Well, right after our game, it's the finale presented by Reese's. Our guys in the studio breaking out a full day of basketball around the conference. They've got highlights and analysis. That's immediately following our game. Right here on BTN. Still have 12 and a half minutes to play. Mount well, St. Mary's looking for a huge road win. Their lead is two. Something to keep in mind. Foul trouble. Starting to rear its ugly head for Mount St. Mary's. They've got four different players with at least three fouls, including Taylor Danaher, who's got four. And with the seven-footer out of there, it just makes the ability to get to the rim that much easier without any kind of shot-blocking presence once you get behind the initial line of defense. Travis really wants it on the block. They don't get it to him. Instead, this is Johnson. Oh, this guy's going to be real fine this year. He can score at will. And a good job by Travis of not giving up on the play, Eric. He shielded off his defender, which allowed a clear path to the rim for Johnson. Mount St. Mary's and Penn State deadlocked at 65. Nice strong hedge by Travis. Good job by Travis. Shot clock down to one. Norfleet! That would have brought the house down. That was from 40. Quickly the other way, Johnson the extra pass to Thorpe who fumbles it and they'll reset the offense. They need to throw the ball inside the trap. He can score with his back to the basket. Eagle number 43 wants it. He gets it. Working on Graves. Face up jumper. And a foul going for the rebound called on Geno Thorpe. First foul on Thorpe. Timeout on the floor. Penn State, they found something in John Johnson. This is a guy who can score in punches. The road is filled with surprises. Make sure you see them. See farther, wider, better. Upgrade to Silver Star Ultra Headlights from Sylvania. Jeepers, it's the Creeper. <laughs> what do we do now? It's a mystery. I know. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. <gasps> Zoinks! It's Lucy, like our favorite State Farm major lady. Hi, gang. I'll handle it. And that's not really a monster. Creeper. <laughs> Mr. Carswell. You meddling kids. <laughs> State Farm takes the mystery out of dealing with insurance. Get to a groovier state. Traveling through Big Ten country? Make sure you don't miss out on anything happening in the conference. Go to btn.com slash hotels for a comprehensive list of hotels carrying the Big Ten network.
lights alert you to potential trouble. So do these. See farther, wider, better. Upgrade to Silver Star Ultra Headlights from Sylvania. 65-65. Still with 11-12 remaining in this one. Penn State and Mount St. Mary's meeting for the eighth time historically. Let's take out today's MFS inside the numbers and talk about Penn State and the way that they have improved their offense in a year's time. Many reasons to which that can be attributed, Eric, but most significantly is the return of Tim Frazier. And now you throw in the addition of the today eligible transfer, John Johnson from Pittsburgh, and it gives that backcourt, which has always been very proficient as exhibited by the fact that Newville and Frazier are number one and number two in scoring. You throw in John Johnson and his versatility has knocked down a triple, also shown the ability to get to the rim. That's just another part of the offensive expansion for Penn State. After the timeout, a free throw opportunity. Khalid Nawandu. This is a one and one. Now if you're trying to pull up an upset, you got to be airtight at the free throw line. And Mount St. Mary's has not been. Look at Penn State now. They're spreading the floor to give all those driving angles available. Johnson misses the spinorama. Rebounded inside, and here comes Norfleet leading the charge for the mount. Mount St. Mary shooting 53% from the field. 52% from behind the arc. They're 11 for 21. Here's Graves. Oh. Oh. Well, he landed hard. And the effort plays continue to impress for Mount St. Mary. And a foul called on Travis. That'll be a block. Rashad Wack taking it to the rim. And he'll go to the free throw line. Trying to back in. Travis, and then, that is tough, but he doesn't give up on the play. He gets up, gets out of the lane, more importantly. The hustle plays have been very, very instrumental in Mount St. Mary's performance today. Sam Prescott replaces Will Miller. Lead is one for Mount St. Mary. Two free throws for Rashad Wack. We have had eight lead changes. Four ties. Still have 10-23 remaining. Travis to the bench. Geno Thorpe back into the game. New Bill. And he's fouled. Going for that rebound. Both teams are in the bonus. So we'll have free throws the rest of the way every time we have a foul. Penn State, a very good free throw shooting team on the year, 75%. The young man that will attempt these free throws, DJ Newble, 73. And on the sideline was Nawandu when he touched the ball. So it's going to be Penn State basketball. Like the hustle by Mount St. Mary's off the miss. Not able to corral the offensive rebound, but that started with good hustle. First by Thorpe, then by Nwanda, who touched the ball when the back part of his heel was on the line. I guess it's a difficult part to have a front part of the heel. <laughs> Taylor. Still just one three-pointer made for the Nittany Lions. for the senior. That's another steal right there. That's been the undoing from Mount St. Mary's, the turnover. Again, an ill-advised long shot, but Frazier sticking with it. And yet another two points in the paint for the Nittany Lions. Chance to take the lead. Penn State hadn't led since 18 to 17. Just getting started in the first period. Penn State grabs the lead. Slicing to the rim. Lather, rinse, repeat if you're Penn State in that sequence. Stretch the floor out and go to the basket. No need to take any kind of perimeter shot.
It's been a while with Penn State back on top. Northlake spins inside and scores. Oh my goodness. This kid's got 20. And he has some moxie. I really like the way he has demanded the ball in clutch situations and delivered from Mount St. Mary's. If you're Penn State, you have to jump that left hand and make him go right. Johnson. He doesn't care sometimes. Off the bench, he's got 20. And you can see his body language. Remember, Eric, when he first checked into the ball game, he was in such a hurry to do something, he walked. But boy, everything from that moment on has been very positive for the transfer from Pitt, John Johnson. So the lead is now three for Penn State. They've got back into this game by committing to getting inside. And they need to continue to do so because the most recent three-point shot by John Johnson notwithstanding, that is the reason that Penn State is in the ball game at all, is getting to the rim and completing. There's a reason, Eric, the team shoot north of 50% against this Mount St. Mary squad, and you need to take advantage of it. Just six points from the perimeter. Those are two three-pointers for John Johnson. Obviously, still a lot of game left to be played here. 8.43 left in this one. But this is the final non-conference tune-up for Penn State before conference play starts on Christmas Eve day at the Bryce George Center against Michigan State. The game's on Big Ten Network. New Year's Eve, I'm sorry, New Year's Eve day, December 31st. With Johnson, Newville, and Frazier, is that a, a threesome that you can count on to play against a rugged Big Ten slate, or is that going to be too small of a lineup for Patrick Chambers to play at the same time? Well, I think what you'll see, especially as Johnson continues to get into basketball shape, I think you'll probably see him at least at the beginning of the Big Ten slate start coming in off the bench to give them a little bit of a lift because Ross Travis has been a nice third offensive option, but I won't be surprised if you do see that lineup at time going small, and it's not all that rare in college basketball anymore because it's very rare that you have a big guy who's the focal point of any kind of offense. After the timeout, Penn State trying to expand that three-point lead. Where they're just spreading the floor and trying to create as many driving opportunities and angles as possible. Frazier, a pull-up. Run down by Norfleet. Mount St. Mary's basketball and rolled off the back of D.J. Newbill. I thought it might have hit Norfleet while he was thrown on the ground. Let's take a look. There's no question what he's doing. Newbill got away with a little bit of a, a little bit of a grab there on Norfleet. But that young man is fearless. Lack of pull up. Tough shot. He was close out of bounds. You mentioned it. A very difficult angle. And that was a great use of pulling up under control and not dribbling into trouble. Johnson. Numbers now for the mount. In transition. Oh, man. Byron Ash, the freshman, gives the lead back to the Mountaineers. That's 14 points for the freshman. Well, they're not going to show this game at any defensive clinic. No. But if you like offensive basketball, it's been fun to watch. Frazier looking for some help. And Johnson, no one stops the ball. Two more for John Johnson. You can tell what Penn State's trying to do, really spreading the floor. They utilize the dribble handoff there with Johnson being the ultimate beneficiary. Prescott, body's flying. Still able to hit the shot. 
Johnson hit the deck. Prescott makes the jumper. He's got 18 points. And, and John Johnson, you can see, he's winded right now. He's not in basketball shape. This is a lot of minutes. They have to keep him out there because of his production. Let's see if his basketball conditioning allows him to finish. Patrick Chambers calls the timeout, just giving Johnson a blow. They isolate Johnson. Pretty good job of moving the feet. A little bit of an extension. I like the no call right there. Look I don't. Johnson was on his way down. He was on his was way. Even contact. I, I, I like the no call. I mean, yes, there was a little bit of an extension, but I thought that was a good no call by the official. Well, as good as John Johnson has been, Julian Norfleet has been as good, if not better. But he's inside the logo for that three with the shot clock winding down. He's averaging 19 points per ball game. Can beat you from deep 36% of the time. And we've talked about it, Eric. He has shown a willingness and a fearlessness in terms of getting to the rim. 20 points, also the leading assist man on the year with just north of five, six assists tonight. He weighs 165 pounds. He is playing with some strength inside. He's taken a couple of hits, been able to finish in traffic. It's been an eyeful. All right, now Johnson's out of the game. Chambers going to give him a blow, so instead he reinserts Allen Roberts. And we've got a foul called on Gregory Graves. And that's his fourth. Timeout on the floor. A doozy here at the Bryce Jordan Center. Mount St. Mary's up by two. This December, experience the gift of unsurpassed craftsmanship and some of the best offers of the year at the Lexus December to Remember sales event. This is the pursuit of perfection. Mine was earned orbiting the moon in 1971. Afghanistan in 2009. On the USS Saratoga in 1982. Once it's earned, USAA auto insurance is often handed down from generation to generation because it offers a superior level of protection and because USAA's commitment to serve current and former military members and their families is without equal. Begin your legacy. Get an auto insurance quote. USAA. We know what it means to serve. It was the guy who started shopping too late for most sites, so he ordered from BestBuy.com and picked up his gift that night. It's never too late to order online. Pick up in-store the same day to get great gifts like the Beats pill. Best Buy. I've stared into the face of evil twice. The first time, I put him in prison. The second time, I put him in the ground. But as I try to move on, there's still that speck of doubt phrase stuck in my mind that the greatest trick the devil ever played was convincing the world he did not exist. No one should be afraid to go to school, but the scary reality is one out of every four kids is bullied. What's safe?